right. All right, so how's everybody doing? I'm Zed Shaw, as you know, and uh, those are the two primary websites I'm pimping. So you'll see that the entire time I'm talking. Uh, but that's not actually what I'm here to talk about. I'm going to talk about basically bullshit. I'm going to tell you how I think the web sucks, despite the amazing amount of stuff you guys put together. I was floored. Like some of the crap you guys are making is just amazing. Uh, reverse engineering flash. Wow, that's like resurrecting a mastodon. That's just amazing, right? It was amazing. Very cool technology. But you're basing it on some really awful stuff. Not, not basing it, but like you're having to build on this just pile of crap, in my opinion. So let's begin. I think of the W3C as a vaudeville act. So you might not know what vaudeville is, but it's the old 1930s, you know, cha-cha-cha, that kind of like corny, like comedy. And basically they're like that guy in the bowler hat who's throwing the banana peels on the ground and everyone else on the internet is walking by and slipping on them and everyone laughs, ha ha ha. Basically most of their technology is kind of crap. So like SVG, like barely works this weird XML sort of definition of how Canvas should actually work. XML, they don't even use XML in the semantic web anymore. They sort of keep it around just to not have to admit that XML is a super bad idea. RDF, anyone actually use RDF? Yeah, because it sucks. XHTML, <laughs> all right, that was, that was brilliant, right? The semantic web, that's my favorite. It seems like every other boom bust cycle in the, in the technology scene, someone's trying to do some semantic web thing and it falls flat and then they go on off and they make like a picture sharing thing or something like that. So the rest of the stuff, despite all their failures, sort of barely works. Like you can get stuff done. You guys do amazing stuff, but it's kind of janky underneath it, right? Like I hate HTML. CSS is seriously the weirdest piece of technology ever invented. It's so bizarre. Video, like that's never gonna happen. There's so much bullshit and business crap and licensing. It's just sound. I mean, I do music. I want to make sound stuff. I tried making like sound sync with some transitions. Just forget it. Someone came out with a library recently. I'll try. Uploads. How many people know that there's a new upload API? It's like, what, 10%? There's a new up. You don't need to use Flash anymore to do uploads. Nobody knows that there's a new upload API that solves all the stuff you hate about uploads because they never tell anybody about it. It's stupid. And JavaScript. I'm sorry, but JavaScript fucking sucks. I fucking hate JavaScript. Any language that can't do real math and store an image in a, in a binary blob is a broke ass language. So, anyone seen popcorn.js? It's 2,000 lines of code that lets you do like sound transitions, something that should just be simple, basic, right? How about Canvas? You can't make circles. Everyone goes, oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you're right. With Arc, defining the radius and doing your own pi calculation. Like when I see this, I think some dude who wrote this was trying to teach his kid about pi. He's like, oh, I know, I'm just gonna make the Canvas API do nothing but arcs and no circles. I want sugar. This is the thing that bugs me the most about, this, about like the whole W3C and all that stuff, is you guys make the sugar I like to use. You make the awesome APIs that I wanna use. Why isn't the stuff that you make the actual crap I use in the, in the browser? Instead of making these janky, broke-ass sort of half standards, make it so that I can actually use what you're trying to give me. So what it turns out is it seems like the W3C exists, or like its benefit is that it makes it so that there's a lot of good money in writing code that makes this shit suck less. But we shouldn't have to do this. So let's pick on HTML. You get five versions of HTML. Well, yeah, five versions before HTML5, right? Because XHTML was one of the versions. And there was even a few others. Before I get actual semantic tags. And no, div is not a fucking semantic tag. I don't care what anyone says, div is not semantic. It's div. It doesn't say, it doesn't say like header. Uh, it, you know, those are semantic. It, now you can actually give name tags. Why do I have to have a P tag on everything? It just assume it's fucking a paragraph. That's what LaTeX does. LaTeX does this. Markdown does this. Everything that you do for document preparation does this. But I have to tag everything in HTML. Oh, except I don't have to always end all the tags because it comes from HTML. But no, under XHTML, that was going to be, but whatever. Horrendous visual crafting tools. The visual crafting tools work 
to actually craft a vision, like Dreamweaver and things like that for years you had. But the problem that I always had with those tools is they didn't make anything programmers could consume. Why, why can't these tools crap out like templates that are actually useful for a Rails program or a PHP program? Or why can't you give them little packages that produce it? And they're barely rich media. Like now you can make awesome rich media apps, but the actual base stuff just barely is rich media, like being able to have like solid transitions and movement. This is why people use Flash. But wait, 3D works? Like the most advanced graphics system you can do works, but none of the other crap works. I have to do like bizarre mangling. I'm in, I'm in Firebug screwing around with CSS just to get a freaking div to center, but I can have a dude run around with a car and shoot shit. <laughs> right? It's fucking bizarre. All right. I've always had this weird theory that it's only usable if you generate stuff server side, which sort of defeats the point because everyone's laptop is actually more powerful than most of the servers I run. So why can't I leverage your laptop's power to do the majority of the rendering? Instead, everyone has these janky like frameworks just to produce this HTML. And then you say, oh, but there's like mustache and all these templates. You ever debug those things? Like they generate JavaScript, right? And then it blows up and now you're kind of like trying to figure out how it generates the template JavaScript that figures out where that thing is. And JavaScript's awesome with errors, isn't it? Yeah, that stuff's really fun. So fuck you, HTML. Can I get a good visual tool? Can I get a real in-browser template, one where I can have like the actual templates in another file and then apply them in the other things? Can I get some decent free universal video? Can I get some synchronized sound? Can I get a motherfucking markdown tag? Wouldn't that be awesome? Like you wouldn't have to actually render the markdown. You could actually even make it where between the markdown tags, you, it disabled all the HTML features so it was totally safe. And since markdown doesn't have HTML in it, you would just be like, you could just render it and you'd be done. And it doesn't have to be markdown. It could be wiki or whatever the hell you want. But that, it's standard. It's been around forever. Why can't I have this? Can I get tags as components? Why can't I say, define a tag when it gets put into the DOM via JavaScript? I've already got semantic tags, why can't I just say, well, yeah, when, you, when, I, when this tag activates, just use this file's functions as the things that make the tags. Can I get disconnected uploads? This is one that bugs the hell out of me. Uh, BitTorrent, one of the main reasons why people shovel a lot of crap through BitTorrent is it lets you do disconnected uploads. It's doing the peer-to-peer -peer thing, but really, you can do these nice disconnected uploads is a, is a big feature for it. So you upload this video, I upload a lot of video, I get to, I got a 500 meg video, I'm up megabyte 499, and that's when the gods of the internet decide to kill my fucking upload, and I gotta start the whole one hour upload again. I'm not even bothering to upload videos while I'm in Norway or when I travel, it's so bad. And the thing is, is yes, you can do most of this stuff if you pile on tons of JavaScript, but this is just, I shouldn't have to do tons of JavaScript just to get a usable development and user interface. So let's pick on CSS. I want a fucking grid. My God, do I fucking hate not having a grid. People love grids. Grids are in almost everything. Basic design is on grids. You read a book about design and they talk about grids. That's how they do layout. Yet I'm doing clear and float. Fuck you, I wanna be able to define a grid. And I don't wanna do it with the tree. I wanna be able to say this is the grid and this is the shit that goes in the grid, figure it out. I don't have to put like, well, that one goes in that part of the grid and this one, I just like, grid, crap that goes in it, you do it. But instead I'm having to like do tree structures, all sorts of bullshit, and why can't I center shit? <laughs> fuck you, if I fucking say center, fucking center it. Don't make me do margin, auto, left, zero, pick, fucking, blah. fuck you. I don't, I, center, it's a word. It has a useful application in design and in most of your publications, they like to center things. But for whatever reason, the douchebags making CSS decided that I was gonna do margin auto left clear. It, no, I mean, I, I can't even get it right. Like, I have to look it up every single time. Oh, and then it doesn't work all the time. If you define some parts as table element style, then it won't center those, you have to use a center tag or some other definition, it's bizarre. So fuck you, CSS. Can I get a fucking grid? Can I get a variable? I love hunting through my CSS, looking for that one hex code that I'm gonna change on the gradient, but it's the same hex code as in others. And so I'm having to like do janky searches. Can I get a loop? Wouldn't it be awesome if you could have a Turing complete language if you wanted to and you could dip into it, you know, embed some JavaScript or something like that. How about components? Can I 
Make it so I can say, import Twitter Bootstrap and import this design that guy has, and then I'm gonna base all my stuff on it, and they don't clash. I've actually got namespaces. You ever try to combine two design elements? Like you should pull in Twitter Bootstrap? No, you use one or the other, and then you hack them together, and you've got these mountains of CSS, and it's totally inefficient. I want components without SAS and Compass. Again, you can make all this stuff work, but you have to use technologies outside of the W3C. Why aren't they going to where other people are doing the work and saying, why don't we just make it like SAS and Compass? That's the way it should be. CSS is what happens when a cat hoarder with schizophrenia tries to do a programming language. It's fucking bizarre. It's like you walk into their house, you're like, why are there all these cats here? This is strange. And they're like, because pizza has a lot of squids on it. That's what it's like working with CSS. Let's pick on JavaScript. Fuck you. There is no way a four element array is equal to a string with three commas in it. Any language that makes you think this, that has this kind of equality, is fucking broke ass. This should be, a, it should go error. That's what it should be doing when you do this. That is fucking bizarre. This kind of crap is all over JavaScript. Floats and no binary types. What, you know how hard it is to do crypto when you don't have real math capabilities? It's fucking bizarre. I get it. They want UTF-8 to be everywhere. They want to say strings are UTF-8. But UTF-8 is basically a binary image transform, like an image storage format. That's what it is. Like all Unicode is just a way of describing images. This is like PostScript or PDF or all those things. But making it so that I can't actually store that data and transmit it binary, I can't store images and things. You can do it on Node.js because they added it, but in JavaScript, nah, there's no binary blob type, eh, whatever, screw you. And that infected WebSockets. So WebSockets was this web protocol for doing sockets in the browser that at first had this janky, weird, everything was UTF-8, it was bizarre. Yeah. The other thing is, why only JavaScript? See, all those other things, people have been using broken languages forever. Every language has wars. Every language is screwed up in some uniquely idiosyncratic, stupid-ass way. But on the browser, I don't know why I'm using only JavaScript. Usually you're given this bullshit thing about the open web, but everyone minifies their crap, which is basically like a Java by, JavaScript bytecode. Everyone uses like CoffeeScript or some other generator. It's gone. The idea that I could open up a page and figure out how the dude did it is broken. And if you want to have that capability, well, you can have decompilation. Make that part of the standard. It's a fucking virtual machine. Why can't I hand bytecode to it? That's what I want to know. Why can't I take bytecode and use some kind of compiler to make like Lua or Ruby or something like that, and I just hand you bytecode? That's a way better specification. Instead of I'm compiling to JavaScript, JavaScript is the assembly language of the web. If that's your assembly language of the web, that's the shit on top, you got a broke ass computer you're basing your stuff on. What the fuck? Basically it comes down to CoffeeScript should be making bytecode. So fuck you, JavaScript. Why not a bytecode specification? That's what I want. Now the guys who make virtual machines will run, oh my god, no, it's just so hard, blah, blah, blah. They have all these stupid reasons. But every other virtual machine does this just fine. So they're all just, there's some other reason. I always imagine there's probably some deep dark room in Google where all the web guys come and they drink their Cavassier and they have their cigars. They're like, what are we gonna do to screw programmers today? I know, <laughs> JavaScript. That's how they do it. I wanna run Lua, Python, Ruby. I don't want you to have to worry about what the hell I'm using to run your stuff. Instead, people use Flash and Java and Silverlight and all sorts of crap. And they're already compiling to JavaScript. So there's no open web bullshit anymore. Just admit it and give me bytes. That's my real major complaint about the JavaScript part of the web, is I shouldn't have to actually use JavaScript if I don't want to. That would be an open web. So I do a lot of web servers, and I think HTTP is kind of the only part that's sort of not super janky, mostly because it's, it's really broke-ass stuff can be avoided, and you just it hasn't changed a lot, right? But it's still pretty horrible. I mean. How many people have actually done web servers, written web servers, anything like that? Yeah, so, okay, cool. Trust me, it's awful. If you haven't done it, yeah, just trust me. It's primary limitation is that it's not asynchronous. Now, so 
Speedy or Spidey or whatever the hell they call this is better, right? Have people seen the Speedy crap that Google's coming out with? It's like a new way to do HTTP. It's more of a binary protocol. Basically, it's a way for Google to save about 2% in operating costs, and they're trying to shove it down everyone's throat. But it's, it's better than HTTP in a way. But the spec is awful. So the last time I checked, this was the spec. I'm not kidding you. It's basically a bunch of like Google-style, Uber bullshit C++ code in one part of Chrome. And it's it looks like it was clearly written by some kid who just stepped out of college. He knew a lot about algorithms, but not how to write code. And so you're trying to figure out, well, what happens when I get this byte code? And after a while, you're just like, forget it. The best spec I saw was some dude who implemented it in Erlang. That was actually really well done. So why does all this stuff happen, right? I mean, why is, why is there this base set of technologies that is just awful, right? I mean, how many people basically, I, I mean, most people I talk to basically agree that it just sucks, like the base technologies, but you still do amazing stuff on it. I mean, with enough passion and enough work, people will really work their ass off to make awesome stuff, like 3D graphics and reverse engineering flash and making virtual machines that are just fast as balls on a language that really just is awful to compile. They do it. And the reason why is we switched from a way of doing it where we wrote code, then wrote the standard, to a way of company X pushes a vague standard on a, in a way to try to dominate. And that's been happening since, I want to say since the XML Microsoft fiasco kind of days, when the W3C got really popular. And I feel that there's just too much money involved and too many backroom deals, so it's not going to change from within. You're not going to see a lot of people just suddenly going, you know what? We're going to make a new browser that ain't got that stuff. There's too many network effects. There's too much involved. Too many people will start throwing, pitching a fit. And you wonder, why isn't someone like Mozilla, who's a not-for-profit, out there making, saying, we have a lab that just makes an alternative to the web that just attempts to fix all this shit just to see if it works? Ah, because they get most of their money from the companies that fund them and from all the donations. So it's going to take a revolution for this to change. Now. Here's the crazy bullshit part. The previous part is my opinion. So, and it's interesting talking to all of you because if I say all that stuff sucks, you sort of know I'm right, but then you always come up with the, yeah, but then you can work around it. And my point is that stuff is broke ass. I shouldn't have to work around it. It should just go away, right? So push that on the stack though. HTML sucks. I don't want, I, you know, it's not HTML, HTML5 sucks. Push it on the stack. So I've been teaching a lot of programming. And the thing I find, and we're talking in metrics, I'm, I'm basically through my books and online, I'm probably teaching you know, maybe um, 500,000 people a month if you count traffic. I say in practical terms, maybe like through direct interaction and stuff like that, you know, we're talking maybe 10,000, 20,000 people online and through talking and stuff, right? That's my guess. And the only part of it I can't explain is object-oriented programming. So I started thinking about this. It's just fucking bizarre, right? Nobody gets it right because there's not really a right. It's difficult to teach, and it has no computational representation in a computer. Everything else about programming has some part of the computer that it's a part of, except for object-oriented programming, like the math parts, the loops. You find those in CPUs all the time. But objects, there's no like object part of the computer. It doesn't really fit in computation. There's no theory for it. And it doesn't really have an analog in the real world. You always see people who are really good at object reporting struggling with like, well, there's bears and cats and or the, oh, there's blueprints that make houses and then, but none of that really fits. It's sort of this weird sort of illogical philosophy that everyone just adapts. So let me show you how I teach the other parts of programming, structured, functional. So what I do is I start with command line stuff. I go, hey, there's, there's commands and they take arguments. So most people can get through that. They get the concept of talking to the computer, right? That's how I explain that. And then I go, hey, you can make your own commands. So check this out. And I show them how to make a command that takes arguments. And then I go, hey, inside those scripts, you can make commands that take arguments. You see the trend here? I'm sort of like climbing a mountain of stupidity. I'm taking this person and showing them slowly, hey, these things are all sort of similar, but slightly different as you go up. And then I say, you can make a module with a lot of commands in it. And so that's kind of a meta command. And then I can teach if, else, and if, else, and then some looping and some structured stuff. And what happens is they sort of find recursion on their own. I don't necessarily have to tell them exactly how recursion is. I have them make a game. And the rooms in the game are sort of recursive. And then they start asking interesting questions like, well, what happens if I ran the game forever? I'm like, oh, you would run out of stack. What was the way to not run out of stack? And people find tail calls. They find the Y Combinator. 
Okay. And this all comes from nothing. I don't have to have them understand basic weird philosophies or anything like that. But OOP is almost indescribable from nothing. I think because it actually kind of is nothing. It's sort of weird and abstract. It's this philosophical idea. It's sort of an, amp, an antiquated explanation of information history. Like it's a way, it's a describing of how DNA's history traveled through like species, or it's a way of describing, you know, a, a blueprint becomes a building. Well, that's kind of an information exchange. And I find that the computational side of it, like you saw the presentation on virtual machines, that's pretty standard. Like when you start dealing with object oriented languages, just finding the function in an object is a pain in the ass. And either the language goes to crazy lengths to make it static so that it's less flexible, or if it's flexible, you have to do just crazy shit to find functions and stuff. It just doesn't fit in a computer anymore. People do weird shit to make it work. And nobody gets it right when they implement it. Anyone do Python? Okay. Python had this thing where they broke the way they implemented objects. Ruby did too. Ruby broke its inheritance for a while and described it wrong. So what they came up with is there's old style classes and new style classes. And what you do for a new style class is you say class inherits from object. Do you know what happens to a student's brain when I say classes are objects? Like I'm sitting there trying to teach them, well, there's objects and, and you have these things and the objects do this. They go, okay, so why do I say class in, is object? And I go, well, because classes are objects. And they go, classes are objects. Error, error. That's what I'm talking about. Object-oriented programming is a weird philosophy that doesn't really fit with the way things work now and doesn't fit in a computer. So all the evidence is pointing to me that object-oriented programming is bullshit. And it's hard to like, accept that because I've done it for decades. All right, pop the stack. Take that HTML idea and bring it back. So this is the crazy part. Tim Berners-Lee sort of created the, the first version prototype of the web on the next step computer, right? And uh, that means it was in Objective-C. I mean, this is, this is the story that I remember. And if you look at HTML and HTTP and all the things that we see that are kind of broken, they look like object-oriented programming problems too, right? Like, um, you know, in object-oriented programming, how it sort of doesn't match with databases because it can't do certain kind of references, like ternary relationships and things. And trees are much easier in object-oriented programming languages than, say, tables and relations are. Um, other things like how HTTP is request-response strictly, not really async. Well, object-oriented languages are like that. Request-response is really strict. There's a lot of similarities. And what I think happened is object-oriented programming had been kind of building up and developing, and then it finally got accepted and became a viable idea on the next step computer. It became easy to do, right? And that is what, and that is what made it possible for them, Tim Berners-Lee, to go and kind of visualize and construct the web and make a new kind of technology that worked the way it is. Now, he may not have known that that's what was happening, but we all know that you learn a language and it sort of influences how you think, right? And you see this object-oriented programming attitude in the way the web sort of works, and also the kind of craziness too. So here's my crazy prediction. I think object-oriented programming is going to be replaced by a usable programming language paradigm. And I'll explain what that is in a little bit. But just imagine, everything gets replaced, duh. But I'm predicting with a certain kind of thing. And then once that paradigm becomes viable, right? It becomes like the way people start thinking about code and they're all excited about it. The thing that replaces the web will come out. That's when the revolution will happen. So what I mean by a usable programming paradigm is this. A way of writing software that is empirically based on usability, not on the design tastes of someone else entirely. So they come up with an idea and they test whether it is an easy to use, easy to understand for everyone, not just beginners, everyone doing programming. And that does not mean dumbing it down and making stupid graphics as the way you do code. We're talking real code that real people will use, but usable. And then easily taught to beginners. The test should be, if I can sit down and explain this to beginners with a good lesson plan, that they will get it most of the time. Now that doesn't mean a crippled, broken thing, but just a thing that is easy to explain. Because then that makes it easy for a regular person to learn, for a professional programmer to learn it. But still powerful and deep. And fits within compilation, uh, computation. That's the kind of counter to it. I could make something really usable for specific domains, but then I have to make it 
so that a computer can put it together really easily, right? And has real world analogs, not some crazy batshit thing, some dude at a university with brushy, bushy brown, or, or, or like gray eyebrows is like, that's a really great idea if we based it on functional programming with discrete mathematics. Like, no, actual analogs in the world. Like, I can go to someone and say, this is kind of like the, the signal a guitar has through a bunch of pedals. Right. Now, my sort of like vague idea of lo what that might look like is just kind of a structured programming setup, because that's really easy to teach and good for beginning, starting with computation. Functional programming that isn't by douchebags who think that should be everything. But functional programming that is just there. You don't even know. It's like a Zen garden. Just things work better. It's so cool. And you don't even need to know that it's functional programming. Some kind of coroutines because I like coroutines. And then the idea of signal flow instead of object-oriented programming, what we have now. Now, I have no idea what that looks like. It's very hard when you're trying to work in an environment and in a world and imagine another world. But that's kind of what we do. So I'm not going to get specific into this, and also because I don't really have a lot of time. But the premise of my talk, and basically what I'm going on about, is that we're stuck with this crap for now. And despite all this stuff, we make amazing things. It's way harder than it should be, though. Because in the back of our heads, at least in the back of my head, there's this little voice that's constantly whispering, bullshit. Bullshit. How many people have that voice? Every time you're coding and you get that bizarre-ass fucking JavaScript error because the scope is global, you forgot var. All of you are liars. You're sitting there going, bullshit. That is fucking annoying. So the way to invent the future, right? You have to nurture this bullshit voice. Anyone know the joke? What do politicians and football coaches have in common? They have to be smart enough to play a game, but stupid enough to care. <laughs> right? So it's the same kind of thing. You have to be smart enough to be able to build this crap. And sort of stupid enough, like you have to make yourself dumb to kind of like go, well, ignore it. But you should always be remembering, like in the back of your head going, this could be better, this could be better, this could be better. How could I do this better? How could I do this better? And not do this better by layering more stuff onto it, but do this better like, like why am I having to write all this code to make this work? What if I just went down to the source and fixed it? And then basically you want to imagine the world with different bullshit. Thank you. So how much time do I have? Yeah, yeah, I think I was pretty quick on that. OK. So um, I promised I was going to go with t-shirts. And I finally got sleep, despite the Norwegian blaring sun in my eyes. And I forgot to bring them. So at lunchtime, when we go to lunch, just for lunch break, I'll be passing out Programming motherfucker t-shirts. Can you show them? Yeah, that, yeah. It's like about four or five. So that means you can't take off if you want to get t-shirts, all you guys with the hangovers. Um, so this is a lie. I apologize. And I have tons of questions. Ask me anything. Um, first off, really quick question for all of you. How many people like the presentation? OK, good. All right. I mean, and then how many people think, well, I'm just full of shit? Oh, well, no, I agree. I, I mean, this is the thing. When you're a pundit and you're kind of like just coming up with ideas, that's, that's sort of what it is. And it's like, I mean, so here, uh, how many people think the idea that the OOP will die, like object memory programming will die and that will create, that, that part's bullshit? Yeah, okay. And now how many people think HTML being crap, like the whole HTML5 and all that stuff being crap, how many people think that's bullshit? Okay, so that's what I'm talking about, right? Everyone knows. I'm preaching to the choir, right? But you guys are all walking around sort of doing this thing where you're like, oh, yeah, this is really great. This is really good. Look at all this cool shit I did. Yeah, it was really hard. <laughs> right. OK, so let's do questions. And anything. You can ask me anything. Nothing? Well, you, you, you're saying that really you'd, brought, you'd like to restart the web, essentially. Give it a complete yeah. reboot. Um, but how likely do you think it is that it'll happen? Oh, I already said it's very unlikely. Yeah. Like this stuff, it, these, this is the thing is you always see this in technology movements and societies, governments, everything. The entrenched players never give up. Like they keep doing what they were doing. 
And what happens is it's only when someone new comes along, basically barbarians come and destroy the city and they build a better city, you know. Um, so what happens is uh, part of what I try to do is I try to convince people that they don't have to put up with that crap and they can go start making something else. Because as technologists, your job is to sort of like envision the future as it could be better. And, uh, and then, yeah, it's just going to be a revolution. I mean, that's what basically the web did to desktop apps in a lot of ways and what it did to a whole bunch of stuff. Well, I'm, I'm more thinking because the, the problem, of course, with the web in that sense is that it's not uh, some central authority that's the master of everything. Uh, the content actually, in a sense, belongs to the users. So there's a lot of legacy content that will somehow have to be migrated mm -hmm. to this new web. So we're actually standing in our own way of, I mean, we're preventing ourselves from that's, reinventing the web. That's really true. But I think the HTML and the web and all that stuff and the content is probably the one of the most convertible content formats we've ever had. I think that's the one thing. Like right now I could convert, uh, you have you seen Pandoc? That, that's an example. Like if I, I had someone help me with a book and they wrote it in some weird ass thing. And I just used Pandoc to convert it to what I needed. So, but you're right. And this is why it just, there's so much, network effect, there's so much entrenched stuff, but this is, it builds on it, builds on it, and then people like you keep making stuff, making stuff, and making stuff, and making stuff, and then eventually one of you goes, what the fuck? And then you make something better, and it just starts wiping all that out. And have you ever noticed that the people, you probably saw this with Node, with Rails, with everything, the people who love the new thing always think it's the future, and the people who like the old thing always think that's the fad. So the, the ones to look out for are not when that happens. The ones to look out for are where the new technology comes out and you just don't remember the old technology, right? Like how many people dialed into bulletin board systems with dial up, right? Do you really remember it? Like I remember I was dialing into bulletin boards and then the web came out and now I'm like, oh yeah, bulletin boards, right? That's the one, that's the technology to look for is the one where the cars, you ever talk to people who like are old and they, they remember not having a car and then cars came out and they have to dredge up their memory of what it was like before cars. Right. So that's the technology you look for is the one that comes out and then for whatever reason, everyone's just like, this is awesome. And they just forget about the other one. Not the ones where there's wars. Those, those are just minor changes. Right. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. thanks. Any other questions? How about uh, questions about the way I'm doing my books and stuff? Nothing? Okay, cool. It's too early in the morning, I think. Yeah, I blaze oh, through that presentation. Keep going, please. Okay, well, thank you.